subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonsom Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 2nd of March. Prime Minister Modi says able to evacuate citizens from Ukraine due to India's rising power. Air Force joins rescue mission. World Bank board backs using 1 billion US dollars in frozen Afghan funds for aid. And Sri Lanka imposes longest power cuts in 26 years as energy crisis worsens. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday sent humanitarian aid to Romania and Hungary to help them deal with the refugee influx amid the Russia-Ukraine conflict as three Indian Air Force planes joined in the country's evacuation mission. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that India will leave no stone unturned to bring back its stranded citizens from war-torn Ukraine and was able to do so due to its rising power. India on Wednesday sent humanitarian assistance to Romania and Hungary in the form of tents and blankets to help them deal with the refugee influx amid Russia-Ukraine conflict as the Indian Air Force joined in the country's evacuation mission Operation Ganga. According to officials the three aircrafts which also carried medical supplies will be evacuating Indian nationals mostly students from Bucharest and Budapest on their way back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressing a poll rally in Uttar Pradesh states said that India will leave no stone unturned to bring back its stranded citizens from war-torn Ukraine and was able to evacuate thousands so far due to its rising power. ये भारत का बढ़ता सामर्थ्य ही है कि हम यूक्रेन में फंसे हमारे देश के नागरिकों को वहां से सुरक्षित निकालने के लिए इतना बड़ा अभियान चला रहे हैं ऑपरेशन गंगा के तहत कई हजार नागरिकों को वहां से देश वापस लाया जा चुका है There are several flights scheduled for evacuating Indian nationals from neighboring countries of Ukraine including Romania, Hungary and Poland. Some Indian ministers have also landed in these countries to ensure smooth evacuation. Uh, very, uh, feeling very safe. Uh, it was a very horrible time and I'm happy that I'm able to come here and uh, thank you uh, thanks for the Indian government for arranging the flights and all. and i hope every of my uh, every friends of mine will make their way back home and will be safe meanwhile in bucharest indian students who crossed the border from ukraine took shelter in a hall as they waited for their turn to go home students were seen sleeping on floors sitting on chairs and roaming around and some were getting packaged food items at the temporary refugee shelter The International Monetary Fund will hold virtual review meetings with Pakistani officials from March 4 onwards which will include discussions on the recent relief measures announced by Prime Minister Imran Khan. The Pakistan government this week reversed the prices of petroleum products which has put it at odds with the IMF's demand that Islamabad should cut subsidies and tax exemptions to bridge its fiscal deficit. Pakistan and IMF the International Monetary Fund are scheduled to hold virtual talks from March 4 for the next 2 weeks during which both sides will discuss the recent relief package announced by Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan as part of the 7th review of the 6 billion US dollar funding facility report suggest PM Khan on Monday announced a cut in petrol and electricity prices pledging to freeze the new rates until the next budget in June despite a widening current account deficit and depleting foreign reserves he also announced new incentives on tuesday including a 5 year tax exemption for expatriate pakistanis interested in investing back home 
The move comes as Khan's opposition already engaged in street protests over what they say is his mismanagement of the economy and rising inflation, says it is set to propose a no-confidence motion in parliament to oust him. The opposition has said that the relief measures mean that the government will seek more loans, further burdening the country's economy. पाकिस्तान अजाफी कर्जे लेकर यह प्रोग्राम पूरा करने की कोशिश करेगा उन अजाफी कर्जों का मतलब मीशत की तबाई आवाम पर मजीद बोझ और मुल्क पर मजीद अजाफी कर्जे The IMF had last month approved a 1 billion US dollar disbursement to Pakistan PM Imran Khan has been against subsidies since he took office in late 2018 and reversing the rates of petroleum products also puts his government at odds with the IMF's demands that Islamabad should cut subsidies and tax exemptions to bridge its fiscal deficit moving on political activist maulana sultan reis has raised concern over prolonged power outages and gas shortage in gilgit baltistan that has been forcing the locals in the region to resort to felling trees for cooking and heating He blamed that government has completely neglected the issue which is also affecting the tourism sector. Political activist Maulana Sultan Reis has raised concern over frequent load shedding and shortage of liquefied petroleum gas in Gilgit Baltistan that has been forcing the locals in the region to resort to cutting trees for their basic needs. He said the indiscriminate felling of trees for cooking, heating and other needs has left the already fragile ecology on a brink and blamed the government has completely neglected these issues. The lack of basic facilities is also affecting the tourism sector, but the corrupt administration has failed to bring about any development over the years. Aaj Gilgit Baltistan ko ek tourist aata hai, to usne Gilgit se hoki jana hai. Gilgit se hi usko ek musbit तासुर नहीं मिलता है यहाँ होटल में क्याम करता है वहाँ बिजली नहीं मार्केट में जाता है वहाँ बिजली नहीं बाजार में जाता है वहाँ बिजली नहीं अब उसने यहाँ से फैसला करना होता है कि मैं विजर जाऊँ शिकारदू जाऊँ अस्तौर जाऊँ हमजा नगर जाऊँ अब उसको पता है कैपिटल में ये हालत है तो वहाँ क्या हो वो यहाँ से अपना बोरिया बिस्तर बांध के दोबारा निकल जाता है लोकल्स इन गिलगिट बल्दिस्तान हैव लॉन्ग ब्लेम्ड इस्लामाबाद फॉर डिप्राइविंग दम of the basic rights claiming the agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped they accuse pakistan which rules the region through a proxy does not grant the locals any political rights and representation although it taxes them heavily in news from afghanistan the world bank board of executive directors has approved a plan to use more than 1 billion us dollars from a frozen afghanistan trust fund to finance urgently needed education agriculture health and family programs the bank announced the plan will provide a major boost to efforts to ease afghanistan's worsening humanitarian and economic crisis The executive board of the World Bank on Tuesday approved a plan to use more than 1 billion US dollars from a frozen Afghanistan trust fund to finance urgently needed education, agriculture, health and family programs, the bank announced. The plan, which will bypass sanctioned Taliban authorities by disbursing the money through UN agencies and international aid groups, will provide a major boost to efforts to ease the country's worsening humanitarian and economic crisis. The bank in a statement said the approach aims to support the delivery of essential basic services, protect vulnerable Afghans, help preserve human capital and key economic and social services, and reduce the need for humanitarian assistance in the future. As a first step, Afghanistan Reconstruction Trust Fund or ARTF donors will decide on four projects worth about 600 million US dollars that will support urgent needs in education, health and agriculture sectors as well as community livelihoods. Afghanistan Reconstruction Trust Fund was frozen in August when the Taliban overtook Kabul as the last US led international troops departed after 20 years of war. Foreign governments added financial aid constituting more than 70% of government expenditures while the United States led in the freezing of some 9 billion US dollars in Afghan central bank funds. 
The funding cuts accelerated an economic collapse, fueling a crash crunch and deepening a humanitarian crisis. The United Nations says the crisis has plunged more than half of Afghanistan's population of 39 million to the verge of starvation. Sri Lanka is in the throes of its worst economic crisis in years, which has led to fuel shortages and frequent power outages. Authorities are struggling to import fuel for power generation and to keep its transport system running amid dwindling foreign exchange reserves. The island nation has now announced nationwide seven and a half hour daily power cuts, the longest in more than a quarter of a century. Sri Lanka on Tuesday announced nationwide seven and a half hour daily power cuts, the longest in 26 years as its foreign exchange crisis leaves it unable to import oil. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka approved the electricity rationing starting Wednesday with power stations running out of fuel. There will be a five hour power cut during the day and two and a half hours at night. The cuts are the longest imposed since 1996 when the country relied on hydropower for as much as 80% of its electricity. The island nation of 22 million people has been suffering a severe shortage of foreign exchange, leading to widespread power cuts in recent days after being left unable to pay for fuel shipments. Many pumps were dry earlier this week and there were long queues at petrol stations which were still open. Energy Minister Udaya Gaman Pilla informed Tuesday that at present diesel is only available for four days in Sri Lanka. The root cause of all these was the shortage of dollars, he added. The country is now in the grip of an economic crisis with widespread shortages, including food and medicines. Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa, in a cabinet meeting chaired by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa via Zoom on Monday, said that current power cuts in the country could be stopped from March 5. The finance minister said all crises the country is facing can be resolved before the end of March and has asked all ministers to be patient until then. A news from Nepal. The main opposition CPN UML has taken a middle path on the US-funded MCC, the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact, after it was ratified by the parliament earlier this week amid the party's obstructions, neither hailing nor criticizing the move. UML Chairman K.P. Sharma Oli, however, questioned the process on Tuesday, attacking CPN Mavish Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal and CPN Unified Socialist founder Madhav Kumar Nepal for repeatedly changing their stance. Indirectly hitting out at Dahal, Oli said some parties in the ruling coalition deployed their cadres on the streets for violent protest, while they endorsed the MCC without revisions just to remain in power. UML in a statement said the government's interpretative declaration on MCC is just a ploy to deceive people as it was already in the agreement. Oli blamed that the current coalition was born out of an unnatural alliance and that it is bent on derailing the constitution. Those Moche, an annual monastic festival in India's northern Ladakh territory, attracted scores of locals and tourists to the region this week. During the festival, monks chanted prayers and performed sacred mass dance for peace and prosperity. It is celebrated at the start of Tibetan New Year every year. The two-day-long monastic festival, popularly known as Dosmoche, was held in Leh in India's Himalayan territory of Ladakh this week with great fervor. Dosmoche is celebrated in the 12th month of Tibetan calendar to mark the damnation of evil and pray for peace, harmony and happiness for the year. During the festival started by Ladakh royals, monks from different monasteries performed the sacred charm dance, synchronizing with the sound of drums as they pray for peace and unity. Dosmoche is a universal peace, a mutual shanti, a mahamari, a pandemic. This is why we have a mutual shanti. Stories from across the world, from explorers and strollers to photographers, took part in the festival that concluded on Tuesday and explored the raw beauty of the Himalayan desert and its local tradition. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.